Seven, product research strategies for 2020. If you saw the last video on how to find a product that does 30 grand a month on Amazon, then you'll recall that I said I'm going to share another seven strategies with you that you can use to find products and win with products on FBA, especially as it's become more competitive. This is that video. So we're gonna dive straight in. If you're not subscribed, consider doing so. Or if you do get value from the session, please remember to hit up those likes for me. So let's jump in. Remember guys, I will be dropping you a high potential product somewhere in this video in a really quick frame. So as an introduction to this, Amazon FBA in 2020 and, and beyond is gonna demand a different strategy. You have to start thinking differently than everyone else. And I'm gonna give you three primary strategies that are broken down in detail in the seven methods today. But three primary things that you can keep in mind, write these on your wall, use these in conjunction with one another or independently. But these three strategies are the keys to you building sustainable sales on Amazon. Number one, research where no one else is researching. If everyone else is researching the shoebox type product, you don't follow them. Think of it like an Easter egg hunt. If everyone moves off to the left, you wanna go right. You need to go where others are not going. Secondly, build your products like no one else is building. So if people are sourcing the same exact version and just adding an accessory and then someone else copies that and they add one more accessory, it's time for you to build that product differently. Maybe consider a new version of the product. Maybe consider a completely different design of that product to solve the same need or problem. So you need to build your products differently. Thirdly, source products from where no one else is sourcing. This one is probably, in my opinion, one of the biggest advantages that you can build in right now. And that is not sourcing products, for example, from Alibaba, but going outside of that and sourcing from places like 1688 and the much more difficult places to source products from. Source products locally might be more expensive, but you're also gonna have the marketing impact of that, for example, made in USA. So no matter what you are doing, you need to be using at least one of these, if not multiple of these in conjunction. And they really sum up what we're gonna get into now. So before we dive into those strategies, here are the old general criteria. If we quickly look at where did we come from. So in this, we had a sale price of 15 to 25, a weight of a pound or less, the shoebox rule, we had non-seasonal, we never wanted to go with a seasonal product, and we had a number of competitors of five to 20, and the minimum daily sales of 10. Everyone wanted to do at least 10 sales per day. And then the profit margin at about a third, at 30%, 33%. So what I wanna do is quickly replace that. This is not one of the seven strategies, but I wanna replace that criteria for you right now off the bat. And this is what you should do at minimum. And then you can look at the other seven strategies we dive into. But if we replace that general criteria, here's what I would use for 2020. First of all, you're looking for a sale price of at minimum $30, a weight of up to five pounds, and I would even consider going higher, maybe even 12 pounds. Size of 18 by eight by 14, which is your large standard size. Minimum daily sales of 15 units, a profit margin of 40%, really important, especially in the US where competition is higher, ad spend is gonna be high in the beginning. Product positioning is 100% required. And if you didn't see the find a 30 grand a month product on FBA, check that video out. I will link it below as well and at the end of this video. Or subscribe and you'll be able to see all those videos. So enough on that. I'm now gonna give you these seven strategies that you can use to find products in this more competitive environment. And these really go against the grain, guys. So some of them might feel uncomfortable or a bit crazy. First of all is seasonal products. Now, generally we're told to avoid these entirely, but there are actually sellers who do incredibly well with seasonal products because most other sellers avoid them. So very low competition often, and it does have other advantages. So if you were to use the 2020 general criteria we've run through already, 
but what you do is you focus on seasonal products. You focus on products that have Google Trends like this and uh, BSR trackers like this where it is up and down and all over the place. But generally, it's really easy to spot these. Like we all know naturally what's seasonal. Something for swimming is probably summer seasonal. Something for skiing is probably winter seasonal. So you can apply common sense to that. But here are two ways you can use the strategy. Number one is focus on and stock up for one season. So let's say you did winter products. You focus only on that, maybe even Christmas stuff. And that's what you focus on and you, you get your orders ready for that and you really just have an amazing season. And that actually floats you for the rest of the year till that season comes back in and you stock up hugely again. So that's one way that sellers do use the strategy. The second way is to balance seasons. So you have summer seasonal products and you also have winter seasonal products and those sales balance each other out. So you stock up heavily the winter products in winter and the summer products in summer, etc. So with seasonality, it actually lessens the load on cash flow. It's easier for cash flow management in a lot of cases because you're not just continually ordering more and more and bigger and bigger orders. You're actually able to order a very large amount, turn that stock, order a lower amount for out of season, and then again, order a big amount for your in season area. So it can actually have advantages for cash flow and also inventory management. The second of the seven strategies is first mover products. And here you're focusing on finding demand that has not been filled. That's what you're looking for. So this is very keyword intensive. You're gonna to have to do a lot of keyword research and in my opinion, using brand analytics is one of the absolute best ways to do this. And I've been doing this a lot lately. You can also check out the brand analytics video. It will be linked below as well for you. So you can use brand analytics or keyword research to discover popular Amazon customer search terms, what people are typing in to try and buy. And then you're looking for a lack of supply or a lack of supply of exactly what those customers want. And you're the first to actually supply that. Now these don't happen often. If you catch one of these, that is an amazing opportunity. The best way to find these is to continually be doing this do this on a set schedule because they are gonna occur once in a while where people are really looking for a certain type of thing and sellers have not caught on to that thing yet. Thirdly is hard to source versions. So here you're gonna use again the 2020 general criteria, but you are focusing heavily on the sourcing side of your equation. So you're gonna hire a sourcing agent who can speak Chinese, for example, if you're sourcing from China, and you're going to source difficult to find superior versions of what is already selling well on Amazon. In this case, it's really important that you find versions not available on Amazon and not available on Alibaba or DHgate or anywhere easy to source. You're looking for those hidden manufacturers, those hidden versions where you're going to be able to build in a bit of time before anyone catches on to or, or start selling the same version as you. And the long, the harder it is to source, the longer that time will be that you're the only one on the market and the bigger of a sustainability or sustainable advantage you can build. So here I would strongly consider sourcing from 1688 or the EWU market. I'll actually be heading there in one month's time or Taobao, but consider these more, these lesser known places where sellers do not source from because it's really difficult and it's difficult for multiple reasons, things like language barriers and uh, be, being able to pay the supplier in RMB, etc. So really, the harder this is for you to do, the better. Next is high sell price products. You use the same general criteria, but you're changing these aspects. Sell price of $50 to $150. Monthly sales minimum of 100. Remember, you're selling at a much higher price, so you might see less sales. Actually, often not, but you might see less sales and it's still going to be very profitable, especially in dollar terms. Higher prices are often going to allow you to go much larger on product sizes or heavier in product weight. So consider your max product weight at five pounds here 
annual max product size at the next level up, which is 60 inches by 30 inches with the longer side plus girth at less than 130 inches. And you can pause this and take a good look at that or check the FBA fee schedule if you wanna go by that category and that size tier. Next is heavy or large products. So here, you're looking for a max product weight of 15 pounds, much heavier than one pound. But again, this comes down to profit. So make sure you're calculating your profit very well. But up to 15 pounds is a good range here. Your max product size, again, is that little more, it's a bit more complicated. It's at 60 inches by 30 inches with the longer side plus girth at less than 130 inches. This is similar to high price in a way because with your larger or heavier items, you also want to raise price. So you're also often, in this case, doing a more expensive item because your fixed costs go up, shipping internationally goes up, FBA fees go up. So generally, you're going to sell at a higher price with these items as well. And therefore, your max sell price, put that up to 150 when researching. Low demand products. So one of the least exciting ones, but definitely a viable option while everyone looks for the high demand products. Most are looking for the home run. And why not look to achieve the same end result with multiple lower volume products? So they sell less each month. But if you have more of them, and remember, each is probably way less competitive, so it's easier for you to dominate these smaller markets. But if you sell more of these products at lower volume, you have the same end result in terms of sales and revenue and profit. And in fact, some would argue that you're actually building in a little bit more of a contingency plan in case something happens to one of the products. So your monthly sales revenue here of 3,000 to 10,000. So a little bit lower, but still really good. Your minimum monthly sales of 120. You do wanna go low, but you don't want products that don't move at all. You wanna be able to turn your inventory. And your max monthly sales at 400. Remember, we're not looking to do more than that because then we're just following high demand products like everyone else. So if you're following the strategy, under 400 a month. And lastly is create your own product. So with this, you're researching as per normal, but when you find that potential product, maybe it's in a really competitive area, you wanna do a new version or you wanna fix a problem that's maybe never been fixed before or this actual version does not exist. Maybe it just isn't in existence at all and you're gonna actually create it. You're gonna invent this product. And so what you can do here is design it from the ground up. And I will do another session on this because I find this part of the business very, very exciting. And I think it's an area where we should all look to move. But you basically are going to first design the product and you're probably going to need someone who's very good with CAD. You're gonna create 3D designs and then you're gonna create the superior product design. And you're actually going to get a mold created with a CNC machining company or a tooling company. And they are creating the tool for you or what's called the mold. And that's what will actually cut your product out of whatever material your product's made out of. So you are actually in control of that. You actually own the machine piece that cuts that product to whatever specifications you have designed it to. So molds are quite pricey. You're gonna pay quite a bit, usually at least a few thousand dollars, but often it's followed by very cost-effective, bigger production runs. So when you're actually using that tool to create a whole lot of units, like a thousand MOQ, 5,000 MOQ, then it becomes much more cost-effective. The biggest benefit from this, of course, is the fact you have a unique product. No one else will actually have that product. And a quick tip on this, if you ever do do it, actually build in your logo to the mold. So the mold, every time it cuts your product, it actually prints your logo, which is hopefully trademarked onto that product, thereby making it pretty much impossible for those who do not have rights to use your trademark to use your mold. And so that can be a good way to increase sustainability a little bit on this as well. And if it sells well, you now have a very unique product uh, and of course, you can also look at patents and things like that, but we're not gonna dive into that in this video. So guys, in the next session, we are gonna be diving into how to narrow down products. So if you're using this video, as well as the find a 30 grand a month product video, 
then you should have all of these strategies outlined. And this is going to result in you finding a lot of high potential products. And that presents the next problem. And that is narrowing down those products you have found, which is the best and why. And so the next session we do is going to be specifically on that. I'm going to give you everything I use in order to narrow products down. And this is also going to involve a lot of strategies people do not speak about that I think are absolutely critical as this becomes more competitive. So if you're not subscribed, please subscribe below. Turn those notifications on. That way you'll see as soon as that is posted. And please drop this video a like if you found it useful. Let me know which of these strategies you chose in the comments below. I hope you guys are finding some awesome ideas and I will see you in the next video.